The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 13354 in the name of Lewis MacDonald on Stonehaven Dialysis Unit. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Lewis MacDonald to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr MacDonald. Thank you very much, President Officer. I am delighted to have the opportunity today to celebrate the efforts of local people in raising hundreds of thousands of pounds for a dialysis unit at Concordon Community Hospital in Stonehaven. I would like to thank members from across the chamber who have signed my motion to that effect and to welcome those campaigners from the area who are in the gallery today. Dialysis, as members will know, is a vital service for those with kidney failure. It involves removing the patient's blood, cleaning it ten times over to make it safe and putting it back. Patients undergo dialysis for at least four hours at a time, at least three times a week. Those who are no longer well enough uh, to cope with a transplant will require this treatment for the rest of their lives. It is therefore a radical procedure and it is tough on patients. One patient told me that after dialysis he felt as if he had run a marathon. This is daily treatment that saves lives, but it is important to remember that people feel worse after the treatment than they did before. The staff at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary's dialysis unit work very hard every day and provide dialysis to upwards of 120 patients several times each week. But patients who travel into the city for treatment would really like to be treated closer to home, and that is why they have campaigned to have local units established across Grampian. There are local units now in Elgin, Banff, Peterhead and Inverurie, as well as for patients in Orkney and Shetland who would otherwise have to come for dialysis to Aberdeen. There is no local unit for the south of the region, the historic county of Kincardenshire. That means patients have to be brought into the city every day by a single patient transport ambulance, collecting patients everywhere from Cove Bay on the edge of the city to St Cyrus in the Mearns. The patient transport has to start with the person furthest away and wait at the hospital for the person whose treatment takes the longest. Given the distances, that makes for very long days for all concerned. One woman described getting up before dawn every morning to get into Aberdeen for four and a half hours of treatment, then getting home hours later, feeling dog tired with much of the day already gone. Her quality of life would be greatly improved if there was a local alternative, and that is what this campaign is all about. Fundraisers in Stonehaven have been inspired by the example of Inverurie, where local people helped raise the money uh, to pay for a local dialysis unit uh, a few years ago. And that example, I think, is very relevant uh, to this evening's debate. But in the case of Kincardenshire, Stonehaven Rotary Club alone has raised many thousands of pounds, and the social calendar in the area has been greatly enlivened as a result. The campaign in this case has been anchored by, once again, has been anchored by Grampian Kidney Patients Association, which has also provided the necessary bridge between fundraising in the community and decision-making in the NHS. The Vice Chair of the Association is Dr Anne Humphrey, who has been responsible for the care of many renal patients in Grampian over the years, including indeed my father Roddy MacDonald way back in the 1990s. Anne Humphrey is in the gallery today. Grampian Kidney Patients Association continues to be among the most active in the country, and I have no doubt that that reflects Anne Humphrey's personal commitment over the years. Also here is local kidney patient Angus Simpson, who first asked me to highlight this campaign here in the Scottish Parliament. Angus worked as a baker offshore, where he was an active member of Unite the Union, speaking up for his fellow workers. Nowadays, he is equally committed to campaigning and speaking up for his fellow patients. And of course, a patient who is fit enough to travel to Holyrood today is likely also to be able to manage his or her own condition and to help develop a new model of self-directed care at a satellite unit like Stonehaven. Not every kidney patient who lives south of the city will be able to do that, as the most acute cases will still need to attend ARI in order to have dialysis with full medical support nearby. But for non-acute patients who need safe access to dialysis with a minimum of fuss, the provision of a local service will make a huge difference to their daily lives. Something like 10% of those who currently attend ARI will be able to have dialysis 
uh, nearer to home instead. That will, of course, help take pressure off the unit at Aberdeen and thereby benefit all of those who attend the dialysis unit there at present. And the support of NHS Grampian for this initiative has been vitally important. And if that's true up to now, it will be even more true as the project enters its next phase. NHS Grampian has recognised this project as a strategic priority, and that recognition has enabled much else to follow. It is in line with the provision of dialysis in satellite units across the region, and of course it is in line uh, with the developing model uh, of self-directed care. NHS Grampian has provided the site for the new unit at Concordant Community Hospital, which is one of the newer hospitals in the region and which is readily accessible from all parts of the Concordantshire area. Now that campaigners have raised the bulk of the funding needed to meet the capital costs of the new unit, they are understandably impatient to move on to the next phase. They would like to have a timetable for construction and commissioning, and of course they would like the unit to be up and running as soon as possible. NHS Grampian clearly are keen to make progress and they have already taken professional advice on what needs to happen next. They are committed to meeting the future revenue costs of the service and again that is critical uh, to the project going forward. But clearly some additional funding is still required in order to allow them to complete the business case and I hope ministers will support the NHS locally as they seek to bridge the remaining funding gap. The British Kidney Association uh, is willing to help, potentially with a substantial grant, uh, but that support is, as always, conditional on the bulk of the necessary funding being already in place. And uh, uh, building on the fantastic work of local fundraisers, which continues to this day, money is still coming in, I believe, every weekend uh, from one direction or another, and that is fantastic. But in order for the case to be completed, uh, clearly, there is more that needs to be done. And I hope ministers will do whatever they can do to help NHS Grampian to move this forward and thereby to help patients in the Stonehaven area to obtain access to a local dialysis service. On that basis, and thanking and congratulating again all of those who have made this possible, I look forward to the successful conclusion of this campaign at the earliest possible date with continued support from all concerned. Thank you very much. Many thanks. Uh, we now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes, please, and I call Nigel Dawn to be followed by Nanette Milne. Thank you very, mu <coughs> very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, as always, I would like to start by congratulating Lewis MacDonald on bringing this debate before the Chamber. But I'd also like to thank him most sincerely for that very interesting speech, which I think actually covered off the subject so comprehensively that he's not left me very much to add, but that's actually fine because you know, clarity and, and simplicity are, are always the order of the day here. Uh, I, I, I start, however, presiding officer, by registering that I first, I think, heard about this wonderful fundraising exercise when at the feeing market in, in Stonehaven, shortly after I was elected as the, as the local MSP to New Boundaries, of course, um, I was uh, required to pay some money to toss some balls at some old plates, which I was supposed to, to smash. Um, I remember that quite distinctly because I failed to hit any of them at all, never mind smash them. So actually I didn't cost them anything and undoubtedly I made my contribution. But I think that would be symptomatic of, of some of the things that have been done by fundraisers, but also, of course, right across the area and, and much more significant things. You don't raise the figure I have as 553,000 at the moment. Uh, you don't raise that kind of money from that kind of activity alone. Uh, and they are seriously to be congratulated for that effort over a sustained period of time. Uh, as Mr. McDonald points out, this proposal is to have a hemodialysis unit at the Kincardenshire Community Hospital in Stonehaven. Uh, and I notice, as he has, that it's the only area in Grampen that does not have that kind of uh, local renal unit, and clearly it will fulfil a need. Uh, I would like to just express one note of concern here, and that is simply, and I was reminded of this in audit committee only this very morning, that the capital costs estimated at 800,000. I have no doubt that is the best estimate that folk could come up with, but I do sound a word of caution that it's only when you've actually finally designed it, got it, 
seriously costed by quantity surveyors, and then you've actually got quotes in front of you, you know what the real cost is even likely to be. Um, and given that there's probably no underground work here, that should be the final answer. But let's just be sanguine about quoting capital costs until we have gone through that process properly. Um, I, I note, as uh, again, Lewis McDonald has commented, that uh, a design team has been appointed by NHS Grampian. Clearly, they are committed to it. Clearly, they are committed to finding the four and a half whole time equivalent nurses who will staff it, uh, probably by directly transferring folk from ARA where they won't now be needed. So, we do seem to have buy in from NHS Grampian. I uh, will in also be interested to hear uh, the comments from the Minister. I would also just to make, like to make one other observation, as I do as the, er, the um, constituency MSP, of course, cross-border, um, I note that a facility in Stonehaven will clearly be of value to people within Aberdeenshire or the historic King Gardenshire, but given the proximity to the rail line, I do just wonder whether this might actually be a very useful facility for those from the Montrose area, clearly outside Grampian, but only just. Uh, and therefore, I think well, I just want to make the point that we may just want to be a little bit cleverer than sometimes about whether people cross borders in order to make use of facilities. And it would be a great pity if that point was missed. I mentioned that in the passing. I don't think it will be missed because actually I'm very conscious that the uh, maternity facility in Montrose is used by folk from King Cardinshire um, on exactly the same kind of basis. So I suspect people are wise up to this. Uh, but we just need to make sure that once the facility is there, it's used as uh, well as it can be. So in closing, uh, presiding officer, can I commend all those involved, the Stonehenge and Rosary Club, the Crampion Kidney Patient Association in particular, for doing that very difficult negotiation process, which again, uh, Mr. McDonnell pointed out, has been done. It would have been very, very easy for this to become just too difficult, and plainly it hasn't been. Uh, and on that basis, I commend everybody involved and thank again, Lewis, for bringing this debate. Many thanks. I now call on Nanette Mellon to be followed by Dr Richard Simpson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd also like to begin by congratulating Lewis MacDonald on securing this debate and for bringing the campaign for a new renal dialysis unit in Stonehaven to the attention of Parliament. I confess I was not aware of this campaign until I read the motion, well, even though Stonehaven is within my region and quite close to home. So hopefully any local publicity Mr MacDonald can get from this debate will help to increase the general public's awareness of it and assist the fundraisers in achieving their goal. End-stage renal failure is a very trying condition to live with, the only long-term cure being transplantation and the only way of treating it being regular dialysis, which usually has to be undertaken at least two or three times a week and which lasts around four or six hours with a further hour or so before and after for preparation and recovery. This is a huge chunk out of people's lives, bad enough if one lives close to a major renal unit, such as those in our cities. But if one lives at a distance, then travel time, of course, has to be added. Stonehaven lies in the south of the area covered by NHS Grampian, where there are currently no dialysis facilities, and the nearest unit being in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, some 15 miles from Stonehaven, and obviously further for people living south of that. At the present time, we're told there are around 25 patients in the south, of Grampian, in the south Grampian area who could benefit from a Stonehaven-based unit. As the motion states, the cost of setting up a new unit in Concarden Community Hospital is around £800,000, and the fundraising campaign has a target of 150,000 over and above a bequest of 250,000 already received to cover the capital costs, with staffing and running costs to be met by the health board. Thanks to the stalwart efforts of several local organisations and other fundraisers, I'm told the end is in sight and the new Stonehaven dialysis unit will soon be a functioning reality. Presiding officer, soon after I became an MSP, I became involved with an almost identical campaign to set up a satellite dialysis unit in Inverurie, mentioned by Lewis MacDonald, um, which is about the same distance north of Aberdeen as Stonehaven is to the south. And I apologise to presiding officer for digressing slightly from, from the terms of the motion, but in that area, a charity called Gordon Renal Dialysis was set up to fund the capital costs and I was happy to help that organisation in a very small way by helping to highlight their work and by reinforcing their efforts to persuade the health board to take on responsibility for the staffing and running of the unit, which from memory wasn't on the cards at the time when, when the, that charity was initially set up. The unit which was purpose-built was opened at Inverurie Cottage Hospital in 2006 with running costs shouldered by the health board and the first patients were treated there soon after, allowing the charity to wind up in 2008. 
I know that many patients in the north of Aberdeenshire have had a better quality of life since being spared the time-consuming journey to Aberdeen two or three times a week and the hassle of trying to find parking spaces close to a really busy acute general hospital. A consultant clinic is held monthly in the unit so that patients can be reviewed locally as well. Moreover, it also provides an outpatient service for venipuncture and for intravenous iron administration for local peritoneal dialysis and low clearance patients. I have visited the Inverurie unit and spoken to patients who have benefited from it, and there's no doubt they appreciate their local facility. Not only is it more accessible for patients, but the atmosphere in the unit is much calmer than can be achieved in a bustling major centre. So, presiding officer, I had the greatest admiration and respect for all the fundraisers who put so much effort into achieving the satellite unit in Inverurie, not least their dogged determination to press ahead without the health board's decision to take it over. And I feel exactly the same about all those who are working towards the new unit in Stonehaven. Even though their task has perhaps been made easier by the success of the earlier unit, which no doubt has influenced the Health Board's decision to staff and run it. I congratulate every single one of them on their efforts, and I look forward to hearing when the new unit's up and running, and hopefully to seeing it in action. Thank you. Many thanks, Dr Richard Simpson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I add my congratulations to Lewis MacDonald for for this motion and has joined him in congratulating all those who have been involved in the, in the fundraising effort, uh, including Angus Simpson and other Simpsons, so it's glad to see the Simpsons featuring here. Um, there are two aspects I want to cover. One is uh, the question of dia hemodialysis and, in fact, dialysis in all its forms uh, currently in Scotland, and the other is the whole question of community support and the relationship between voluntary and statutory organisations in this sort of issue. The, the, the situation is that there are some 250,000 patients across Europe on dialysis, and the figure is going up by 4 to 6 per cent annually. In Scotland, we currently have 35 haemodialysis units, 25 of which are now satellite units. And this is important because if you go back a period of time, you'll find that the units were all centralised on places like Aberdeen Royal, and they were not in satellite units of the type we've heard today uh, in Baruri and now to be Stonehaven. This addition of satellite units is really critical. And it's actually part of what the Kerr report talked about very strongly. And that is where it is safe to do so and it is helpful to patients, services should be devolved to as close to them as possible. And hemodialysis is an absolutely classic example of that. When we obtained the hemodialysis unit in my own area at, at Royal Larbert, this was a very useful step forward and saved patients from travelling into Glasgow. So having 25 of these satellite units out of the 35 in Scotland today is really important. There were only 16 some 10 years ago, I understand. In addition, 11 of the 35 units also provide home dialysis, and that's an area, an area that is growing uh, and is becoming safer. There are also 15 peritoneal dialysis units in Scotland, this is an area of particular interest to me, as I was actually the first doctor in Scotland to apply peritoneal dialysis in 1967. It was a very little-known technique. I regret to say it was not successful uh, for the patient at that time, but the patient uh, and my consultant were both very keen that we should try this novel technique uh, at the time. So peritoneal dialysis is an alternative when hemodialysis can't work. And in relation to something that was said, I think, by, by Nigel Dawn and alluded to by Lewis MacDonald, 31 of these units provide holidays and visitor dialysis. So that is also important because dialysis tends to tie you to your unit. So the knowledge on our website that actually you can go to another area and get the dialysis is important. And this is underpinned by another thing in Scotland, and that is that the kidney patients in Scotland are the only group at the present time, as far as I know, who have total access to their laboratory results. This was very evident when the Glasgow IT system collapsed. As you remember, it was down for two days, and we discussed that in this parliament. The only group who actually were totally safe during that time were the kidney dialysis patients, because they knew their results, and they could tell the, the consultants exactly what those results were. So there are good, there's excellent work going in Scotland. There are, there are a couple of clinical trials. One is being coordinated by Dundee. In Dundee, it's a 2.2 million European-wide study on new techniques to under, underpin the vascular access related to hemodialysis, a very important study. Uh, and there's, 
There's another four-year trial on 2,000 patients uh, about tackling the issue of iron, which is an impor also important. So we have good research in Scotland, as we always do. I'll finish on the other aspect of this note, uh, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and that's the question of voluntary support. For me, it's essential that there be agreement with the Health Board beforehand, because raising the capital is one thing, raising the continuing costs is another. So communities should agree with the Health Board on, uh, on that development. But actually that voluntary and statutory partnership is exactly what's contained in the documents by Sir John Elvidge called the Enabling State, which I've commended in other debates to this Parliament. And I, I believe is, in fact, a way forward because it gives ownership to the community. It gives a feeling of, uh, of, of cooperation and partnership with the statutory body. And that is very good for Scottish society as a whole. Thank you. Many thanks. Can I now invite Maureen Watt to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer. And I, too, thank Lewis MacDonald for bringing uh, this to the attention of Parliament and to the contribution from other members. It is, of course, <clears throat> clearly close to my heart, um, as constituents of mine may obviously prefer to travel south to Stonehaven rather than into ARI, but of course I speak here uh, as a government minister. Can I also welcome uh, to the gallery those from Stonehaven? Their fundraising efforts have been absolutely marvellous from Stonehaven Folk Club's Cabaret Night, uh, Stonehaven Rotarians, as uh, Lewis MacDonald mentioned, uh, the July Music Fe Festival in Mineral Well Park, uh, the Harbour Festival, um, the large sum from uh, the Gammy family, uh, Beer Festival, uh, Christmas lights from the residents in Malcolm's Way, uh, and the Sea Cadets, to name a few. I've probably uh, missed somebody out or some groups out, and I apologise for that. Um, as others have said, patients uh, requiring dialysis treatment have to go through continuous life-saving treatment, sometimes for several years, which inevitably means some disruption to everyday life. Firstly, I want to make clear that the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that people with re renal conditions are able to access the best possible care and support and benefit from healthcare services that are safe, effective and put the patient at the centre of their care. We're absolutely committed to ensuring that patients requiring renal dialysis in Scotland are able to access these facilities as close to home as possible, but because of the highly specialised nature of dialysis, dialysis, people often do have to travel a fair distance to their nearest renal unit. It is well established within research that renal patients do better when they receive treatment nearer to home, with the support of family being on hand, with less travel time, and where set routines for mealtimes, for example, are easier to keep. An example of how we're seeking to ensure continuous improvement in this area and reduce journey times for patients in more remote areas is a pilot programme which is underway, where two dialysis chairs have been provided by NHS Gator Glasgow and Clyde in Campbelltown to provide a dialysis ser service to patients in the Argyll and Butte area. The two-year pilot, which began in August 2015, will be evaluated after one year to analyse its progress and whether such a model of care might be workable in other parts of the country. This pilot was also co-funded by local fundraising and I look forward to seeing the results of the pilot to ensure that any learning can be passed to other NHS boards. We know that in December 2013, there were nine adult and one paediatric renal units in Scotland with 25 dialysis units. Uh, the number, of course, increasing, as Dr Simpson said. Um, the fundraising which has been done by the groups that I mentioned is testament to the great work which can be done locally along with health services to ensure services are delivered locally to patients. Indeed, NHS Grampian is committed to establishing a satellite renal dialysis unit in Kincardine and meeting the staff running and equipping costs, therefore meeting any difference between the cost and the final fundraising total. 
As has been said, a design team has been appointed to work with the local community and the board to agree a cost for the facility, after which a commitment to the timetable for the establishment of the service can be given, which I'm sure is great news for the 25 patients in the Stone a Stonehaven area who travel to Aberdeen on a regular basis for treatment. Of course, for some people, although not all, dialysis is a precursor to the requirement for a kidney transplant. In 2013, we published a donation and transplant plan for Scotland 2013 to 2020, which sets out the ways in which we hope to improve donation and transplantation in Scotland. We want Scotland to be amongst the best performing countries in the world for donation and transplantation. The plan sets out the priority areas of work that we need to tackle over the period up to 2020 to enable us to reach that goal. The Scottish Government is delighted to be working with Kidney Research UK to deliver a three-year peer educator programme specifically designed to raise awareness of kidney disease and the need for organ donation, uh, particularly with the B, in, within the BAME communities in Scotland. And I'm looking forward to attending an event that they have organised in Glasgow next month to learn more about this important work. In regards to services for renal patients, the Scottish Government has, since 2010, funded the Renal Patient View Service. And this service enables patients to view their latest test results, as Dr Simpton said, and diagnostic information online from anywhere in the world and to share it with anyone they want. Information comes directly from existing records, for example, hospital and GP records, and may be entered directly or via other apps. Securing <coughs> messaging functionality is also included. This system provides a vital service to renal patients, allowing them to communicate with their cl clinician to discuss their test results and ongoing management of their condition. The system can also be developed for other conditions and the Scottish Government is currently working with clinicians and third sector organisations to develop the system for other long term conditions. I'm also looking forward to visiting the renal unit at the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary on the 4th of November to see the vital work carried out there and importantly to meet some patients who attend the hospital on a regular basis to receive their care. So again, I commend the excellent fundraising work that has been done in the Stonehaven area, and I look forward to hearing the progress as members here will probably in our regular meetings uh, with NHS Grampian uh, and uh, with the local community to hear that as how plans proceed for this dialysis service at Kincardine Community Hospital, which of course will be very welcome. Thank you. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes the latest McDonald's debate on Stonehaven Dialysis Unit, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.